Outcomes in multiple myeloma have improved substantially over, say, the last 15 years. And part of that has been because of two fairly new drugs, and they're part of often triple therapy. But now there's Termaline MM3 and MM4, and they're taking a different approach, and this time it's in the maintenance setting. So I'm with the primary author of this pair of phase three trials, uh, Dr. Sagar Laniel, who is an MD, a professor and chair of the Department of Hematology and Medical Oncology at Emory, and also a chief medical officer at Winship Cancer Institute of Emory University. Remind us about Termaline because it's such an interesting group of trials. First off, one and two have kind of been been reported out a bit. Then we're going to talk about three and four. So where are we with uh, the Termaline trials? So the trials really are focusing around the use of exasimib, which is an oral proteasome inhibitor, cousin of bortezomib, which is the previously IV and now sub-Q proteasome inhibitor. And what they're really trying to do is understand the role of this medicine in newly diagnosed myeloma, that's uh, tourmaline MM1. Then in the relapse trial, combining exasimib with Lendex versus Lendex in early relapse, that was just published recently in the New England Journal. And then the three and four trials that you mentioned are really looking at maintenance, one in a younger patient population post-transplant and the other in an older patient population who's not had a transplant. So these patients have been through induction therapy and they've had some kind of a response. Correct. That, that measurable response. At least a partial response or better. Um, and in the older patient population, they've had at least six months of therapy. Uh, in the transplant patient population, they're within six months of their transplant uh, afterwards. Is there a specific delay? In other words, is it more better to do it two or three months, or is it better to get it right after the transplant? So typically, we start maintenance about three months after the transplant. Okay. We allow patients to recover, but usually you give a little bit of a window so that if patients are having a delayed recovery, they can get better. And this is a placebo controlled, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are you hoping to find? What's the science? What's explaining what you're hoping to achieve here? Yeah. So I think um, the role of maintenance therapy has been pretty much established actually at this meeting this year. Uh, there was now a large meta-analysis of over a thousand patients who received lenalidomide maintenance after transplant. What this trial is trying to do is use a different class, the proteasome inhibitor, which we know has pretty significant activity in the maintenance setting, but is difficult to give because it's, you have to come to the office so often. So exasimib offers you the opportunity of a very active drug class in maintenance with an oral ease and convenience. So when, I mean, obviously you, you stop after the method section here at this meeting because you're not presenting data, you're, you're explaining what's going on. Right. When will you have some data? So the trial, uh, both trials are actually enrolling pretty well. So I think they're about a third to a halfway down in terms of numbers of patients enrolled. So it'll be a few more years before we have data available. Do you think this is a promising approach? I mean, obviously you're doing the study, but just mentally, are you looking at this going, I think we've got something here? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think maintenance therapy is really important in the management of patients with myeloma and trying to figure out which patients should get a proteasome inhibitor, which should get an IMID, and which should get both. Our group has actually published data on using both for high risk. That's really a question that we're gonna be answering in the next five to 10 years. Well, it's been a very interesting 15 years yeah. with some of these new therapies, so I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's exciting. For Ash Clinical News, we have a variety of uh, interviews. Please look at those, and of course, in the book itself. For uh, American Medical Communications, I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor.